In this session, we're going to look at how we can control our subassembly geometry through the use of targets. Let's drag this over, and I'll click Fit to Screen so we can see the preview better. Then we'll come down to the palette below, and I'll choose Target Parameters. Here's where I can create custom targets. I would like to have this edge of traveled way here follow a horizontal offset. To do that, I'm going to create a parameter. I'll choose Create Parameter, and then I can select the type of parameter. Remember that a Civil 3D corridor can target three things, a surface, an offset, or an elevation. We have the same three things here. I'm going to choose Offset, and then I'm going to give this offset a name. I'll call it Lane Offset. I'll press Tab to accept that. We can see the target here in the preview now. For Display Name, I'm going to call this Lane Offset, putting the space between the words. This is the formal name that I'll see in the target dialog box when I'm working with my corridor. I'll press enter. Now I can set a preview value, uh, the value that I want to see up here in the preview area. Let's make this 10 feet for right now. You can see how that moves. Note that I can also drag it around just by clicking and holding on it. Okay, let me set that back to 10. So, what I'd like is this point P2 to follow this offset, if it's available. So let me grab the link. That'll help me get access to that point. Remember, I can also grab that point over here in the flowchart. Let's drag this over. I'll click Fit to Screen. And see if we can make this a little bit easier to see. So this particular link was created when I entered point 2. Point 2 was placed relative to point 1 with a cross slope and a lane width. Notice if I come down a little farther, I can select an offset target, which will override my lane width. Let me open the menu and I'll choose Lane Offset, the one that I just made. You can see that it's now tied to that target. And if I drag this back and forth, I can validate that the horizontal target is working. Now that we've seen this, let me open this menu here in the preview. We can see this is set to Roadway Mode. There are two modes here, Roadway and Layout. If I choose Layout Mode, it will show my geometry drawn based on any measurements or variables that I've defined. If I open this up and choose Roadway Mode, this will show my geometry and it will be utilizing the targets if they've been assigned. So that's why we have two modes. Now that I've assigned a horizontal offset to my edge of travel way, I'd also like this point to follow a profile if necessary. Let's create another target parameter. This one will be Elevation, and I'm going to call this Elevation. Let me drag this over to give myself some more space. We can see that targets in the drawing now. Display name, we'll call this ETW Elevation. That'll be the nice formal name I see in the target dialog box. And then for the preview value, I'm going to keep zero for right now. It's at a zero elevation. Let's drag this back over and I'll select this top link. And notice that in addition to assigning an offset target for that point, I can also assign an elevation target. Let me open the menu and I'll choose the elevation one that I just made. Perfect. Now if I grab elevation and drag that up and down, I can see that is driving the elevation of point two. Once again, I'm gonna reset things. In the preview area, we'll just make the elevation zero and I'll set my width to 10. We'll fit to screen. Now that we understand the basics of assigning targets, in the next lesson, we'll look at how we can assign super elevation properties.